you still tried to kill me, you just did not succeed. I just didn't make it to the grave. Like, let's be serious. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kennedy. If you're new here, if you're not new, hey girl, how have you been? Welcome back to another true crime and makeup video here on the channel. We're getting back into the swing of things, consistency, our consistent upload schedule. We're gonna hop straight in today. For today's case, we are in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I don't think we've been to Indiana before. But this case is a wild one, so let's get it. And in the summer of 2015, Rosita York is a 30 year, can I talk, is a 39 year old single mother. Rosita is working full time at a hospital <clears throat> in the cafeteria and taking care of her daughter on her own and getting along just fine. Her daughter is nine year old Brooklyn. She's got a father who she's very close with as well as her sister. And they talk every day, though her sister is currently stationed in the military in Louisiana, they still talk every day. So one day in July of 2015, Rosita gets a friend request. Can I talk today? Obviously not. A friend request on Facebook. This friend request was from a man by the name of Willie Amos. And Willie Amos had a lot of mutual friends, a lot of people that Rosita was familiar with and went to high school with, so she accepted his friend request. Why can I say friend request? Friend re request? Why do I have a lisp today? What is happening? Shortly after accepting Willie's friend request, she gets a message from him saying that, you know, he added her because he thought she was very beautiful. He wanted to get to know her. So they started chatting it up in the Facebook Messenger for a couple of weeks. They have a lot in common. They both really like to cook. So they slowly start to bond over Facebook over the next couple of weeks. And eventually, Willie asks Rosita if he can have her cell phone number. And she says yes. So she gives him her number and she just waits by the phone and she's waiting for this phone call. And eventually Willie does call her, but he calls her like star 69, no caller ID. And she asks him about this and he said he would just prefer, prefer it if he called her because he's so busy, he doesn't want Rosita to have his phone number and we're not gonna judge, okay? We're not gonna judge. We're not gonna judge. But they continue these phone conversations. Rosita's kind of just waiting on Willie to call her. And they deepen their connection. Rosita realizes that Willie has a daughter as well. And they talk about everything. Willie tells her that he has dreams of opening a restaurant and they continue to have these phone conversations over the next couple of weeks. And so Rosita, she doesn't let it go though, the block number thing. She continues to ask him, you know, why can't I call you? And eventually Willie is honest with her and he tells her that he is currently incarcerated and that he's talking to her on a jail phone, you know, that he should not have. So she can't just be calling him willy nilly because he's not supposed to have this phone up in the first place because he is incarcerated. So she finds out that she's been forming this relationship with this man that she met on Facebook and they won't be meeting in real life anytime really and that they won't be meeting in real life anytime soon because he is locked up on drug charges. He was caught dealing drugs. But he tells Rosita that he'd be out within a year. But this does not deter Rosita. They continue their phone calls and their Facebook messages on his burner jail phone. And then four weeks into their virtual relationship, Willie drops another bomb on Rosita. He tells her that he was not initially honest about the reason that he went to jail. 
I know this is a lot in the beginning. Just, just hold on, just hold on, wait a sec. Um, he was not initially honest with her about why he ended up in prison. He said that he was scared, that she would be scared away, and he wanted her to get to know him before he told her the real reason he was incarcerated. So Rosita finds out that Willie was incarcerated on attempted murder charges at the age of only 17. And he was originally sentenced to 40 plus years, but he was getting out after only serving about 20 or so. And he had shot this person multiple times. And so he was incarcerated on just attempted murder, which is so crazy that attempted murder in some places versus like regular like murder murder it's such a different sentence like the only thing that's changing the sentencing is the fact that i survived not the fact that the act was still committed that don't make sense to me personally like attempted murder ought to come with the automatic life sentence oh my god you still tried to kill me you just did not succeed i just didn't make it to the grave like let's be serious but regardless, Rosita continues her relationship with Willie. And she is sure that he was a changed man. The conversations continued. They talked about Willie living with her and being paroled at her house, helping her raise her daughter, being the man of the house, providing, paying bills, things of that nature. So eight months after the friend request, after their virtual meeting, Willie is finally released from prison and he has to go directly to a halfway house, of course. But the two of them obviously at this point can finally spend like some time in the real world together. And that is exactly what they do. And so Willie settles into life outside of prison pretty well. For someone who had been incarcerated for that long, he got a job just three weeks after being released, which is a big deal, honestly. Child, I know somebody that's been out of jail and still don't have no job, child. So Willie got out of prison, he got a job, and then a month after his release, he moved in with Rosita and her daughter, Brooklyn. And things are going along pretty well. Rosita kind of does the same thing to her family that Willie had done to her. He doesn't tell, she doesn't tell her family that Willie had been in prison until after they've met him and they're pretty impressed by him. They think Willie is a great guy, but she doesn't tell them why he went to prison. And so after meeting the family, things are going pretty well for Willie and Rosita as far as the relationship goes. She's very happy, but eventually her father starts to get sick and he needs like full-time care this is obviously very devastating for rosita but willie allows her to quit her job to take some time off from work so she can spend more time with her father and he is going to pick up the slack you know when it comes to money he's going to work double time so she can have more time to spend with her father not only did he pick up the slack financially he helped Rosita out with Brooklyn a lot. And if you're triggered by like child stuff, that's not where this is going. That's not where this is going. Still about to be fucked up at the end, but not that kind of stuff, okay? I wouldn't do that to you without a trigger warning, child. And not only was Willie's behavior obviously standing out to Rosita, it was a great look for him when it comes to her family. They're very appreciative of the help and the support he was providing to the family at this time. But is he, oh, sitting all the way up here and dropping stuff on the floor, I'm just not picking it up. But was he a wolf in sheep's clothing? We wouldn't be here if he wasn't, child. Things don't always stay peaches and cream. About two months after really, Willie has been released, after people start seeing them out together, things of that nature, people start to reach out to Rosita asking her if she was really familiar with Willie's past and like what actually went down and what he actually went to prison for. 
while Willie had originally told her that it was like a heat of the moment argument he was having over his ex with this new man, what really happened is that Willie approached them in the middle of the night and shot his partner's new man seven times while he was asleep, unprovoked. So she went from like thinking Willie was in prison for drugs to then finding out that there was some sort of altercation that led into him shooting someone in self-defense to then learning that he actually like snuck up on these people in the middle of the night, premeditated, shot this man seven times in his sleep. But Willie explains it to her. He is finally honest with her and he's very remorseful. And so Rosita concludes that, you know, he was so young when this happened, he was changed. He had been reformed and they continue their relationship. So their relationship continues um, at this point. Rosita is finally honest with her family about his past and why he actually went to prison. And of course, you know, they don't love it, but they've met him at this point. He's been around, he's been helpful, and he's been nothing but great, you know, up until this point. And Rosita is a grown woman, you know, so they can't change her mind or force her to make any decisions. But shortly after this revelation, this revelation is kind of overshadowed on April 7th, 2016, when Rosita's father passes away. And unfortunately, it would be after her father's passing that Willie's behavior started to change and he was not the stand-up guy that he had portrayed to be since getting out of prison. It said that he was kind of like annoyed by Rosita's grief and he would tell her to get over it, to stop crying, you know, being extremely insensitive. Willie became very possessive and controlling and aggressive within the household. So shortly after her father's passing, it's just too much for Rosita and she kicks Willie out and tries to go back to life, you know, the way things were before when it was just her and her daughter, just a little over a week after her father's passing, which is insane. She tries to go no contact with Willie, but he keeps calling, he keeps texting. He'll call her upwards of like 20 times a day, red flag, but he is relentless. Willie likes to show up to the house, unannounced trying to collect the rest of his belongings but Rosita doesn't want to let him in okay not without the police involved so she does call the police for them to be there when he is collecting his things but this does not stop him from being aggressive and combative towards her and he's even combative and aggressive and threatens her in front of the police officers they tell her the best they can do is suggest that she get a restraining order against Willie. Which y'all know how I feel about restraining orders, child. Unless it comes with somebody standing outside of my door 24-7. What the freak is the point of a restraining order? Like, I've just never seen or heard of a restraining order working. If anything, they just make crazy people crazier. So she does go out to get the restraining order, but the court system cannot catch up to Willie to serve him with the restraining order paperwork. So while the restraining order is filed, it's not you know valid or in use or whatever until Willie is served. But neighbors constantly see Willie passing by the house. He's caught on people's ring doorbell cameras, passing by up and down, driving up and down the street all the time. He pops up on a Rosita at her job in the parking lot, like he does not give it a rest. And he would stand outside of her home and talk to her from the outside. He'd be yelling in. He would stand near her bedroom windows and yell to her while she was in bed. Willie is tweaking. 
And one morning in particular, when Rosita is up early getting ready for work, she notices that Willie is parked in the street in front of her home. He has his caution lights on, so like he wants her to know that he's there. So she gets in her car and she starts to drive to work and she realizes that Willie is following her. She says she parked her car to of course head into the hospital and as she was getting out of the car, Willie approached her. He cut her off, was standing right in front of her and spit in her face before fleeing the scene. And this would be just the start of the escalation in Willie's behavior. So after this incident, Willie stopped calling, he stopped texting, and he stopped popping up. Rosita thought that maybe he was giving it a rest, you know, he was taking some time off from freaking harassing her. But unfortunately, a few days after the spitting incident, Rosita is awakened in the middle of the night by Willie attacking her punching her and hitting her while she is asleep in her bed. She's battered and bruised. Detectives come over, they take pictures, but there's not much they can do because again, they have been unable to serve Willie with the restraining order paperwork. They advise Rosita to spend some time at a friend's house. So she does that and she sends her daughter, Brooklyn, to spend the night with her mother. And so they spend some time away from the home. Rosita gets the locks changed and they feel as though they can go back to living life as normal. Sorry, I'm still not sure about- But there's another incident on another night and this happens when Brooklyn is having a friend over. She has a friend over, they're asleep in the living room. And when they wake up the next morning, Rosita wakes up to a picture text to her phone from Willie of her sleeping in bed. And with the picture, Willie told her that the kids saved her life that night. And whatever he had planned to do to her, he did not do because the kids were present. And after this, Willie goes without any type of interaction for about a month. So this brings us up to a year and a half since he's been released from prison. But eventually he does pick back up with the calls and text messages and he begins to call her all the time, day in and day out, texting her all the time again. And Rosita just began to be more careful. Her daughter spent more time staying the night at her mother's house just in case something happened. The court system has still been unable to serve him with the restraining order. So the restraining order still is not technically filed. So Rosita just has to do her own thing to keep herself safe. She gets a gun and she also starts going to work outside of her normal times. So every day she worked a 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift. Sometimes she would leave super early for work. Sometimes she would leave super late for work. And after she got off at two, she would hang around a little bit some days just so he wouldn't be able to predict where she was, when she was, how she was moving. So all of this leads up to the events of the 23rd of August, 2016. Rosita is at work when she gets a phone call on like the hospital line. She goes to answer the phone and it is Willie on the phone. He asks her again if he can move back in, if they can get back together. And she stands firm. She says, you know, no, I don't want to get back together. And she was extremely uncomfortable. After her rejecting his advances again on the phone, Willie tells Rosita that, you know, this was his final straw. He was giving her one last chance, but today he was gonna kill the both of them. He was gonna kill Rosita and then kill himself. And so obviously this was very like scary. It flustered Rosita, so she left work. She went to go pick up her daughter and then the two of them went home to collect their things and go somewhere else. While Rosita is at home collecting her things, she gets a call from one of Willie's cousins telling her to get out of the house immediately that he was on the way and that he had, you know, evil intentions. Rosita went to her nightstand where she kept her gun and she realized that he was no longer there. So she scooped up her daughter and they left immediately. And they are safe for the night, but the next day on the 24th, they return to the home to grab some more of their belongings. So when the two of them arrived back at the home the next day, she realized 
when she was about to enter that the front door was open. It was slightly ajar, so she called the police and waited for them to arrive before entering the home. The police enter the home first. They check it, they make sure everything is good, the coast is clear, and they remain there at the home with Rosita and Brooklyn as she collects her belongings. So later that night on the 24th, after they collected their belongings, Rosita was taking her daughter to go stay the night with her mother. This must have been a routine that Willie had picked up on because as she was sitting in the driveway getting to pull off from her mother's house, she got a phone call from Willie's father. Willie's father, who was a pastor, was um, checking on Rosita and asking Rosita if she had seen Willie anytime soon. And she said no, she had no idea where he was at. As she was having this conversation with Willie's father on the phone, Willie pulled up. Rosita, still on the phone with his father, tells him what's going on. And Willie's father tells her to drive. Put the car in drive and just go. She gets off the phone with Willie's father and proceeds to call 911 and let them know that she's being followed and chased by her ex-boyfriend. So she's driving down the road and Willie starts to accelerate and starts, you know, rear ending her, bumping her car with his car. Eventually Willie stops ramming the car because he starts shooting from his car into Rosita's car. He smashes her back window out and he is shooting and shooting and shooting into the car. Whole time Rosita is on the phone with 911. In the chaos of everything that is happening, Rosita spins off and her car hits a tree. And because of how fast they're going, the chaos of the whole thing, or on purpose, Willie slams his car into Rosita's car. And so her car hits the tree and then Willie's car hits her and his car spins off into a fence. So they're on a residential road outside of houses and there's this huge accident. So even though this is a big wreck, they're both able to get out of their cars and try to flee the scene. Um, Rosita is able to get out of her car. She's trying to get away. Willie approaches her with the gun and shoots her multiple times. The first shot is in the leg, so Rosita falls to the ground. So she's on the ground on her stomach and Willie continues to approach. And from here, he puts the gun directly on her back and shoots her point blank range. Like I said, this is happening in the middle of like a residential area. So there's multiple 911 calls being placed. It's a huge commotion and a bystander intervenes. And before Willie can shoot Rosita again, a woman comes up and says, enough. And she's yelling at him like, you know, do not shoot, do not shoot her again, walk away. And after this, Willie flees the scene on foot, but is later apprehended by police officers and Rosita is rushed to the hospital. And luckily, surprisingly, after being shot twice and after several surgeries and being in the hospital for a little less than a month, Rosita makes a full recovery. So Willie is, like I said, apprehended and charged with attempted murder again. <laughs> for the second time, just a year and a half after being released the first time. He's also charged for being in possession of the firearm because he was a felon and he shouldn't have had that. In September of 2017, Willie is obviously found guilty and sentenced to 40 years in prison again. So this is Willie, I know, right? Kind of a jump scare. Ah! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, I'm Shit. my bad but I realized in the last video I uploaded it without for, like remembering to put any pictures in so here's a good old picture of Willie I also forgot to mention that in the courtroom his whole defense was that he never intended to kill Rosita he said he was sorry for what he did but he did not intend to kill her he said to the courts if he had actually intended on killing her he had six bullets left in his gun and he would have used them okay yeah so no real remorse he said he was sorry but was he really the prosecution said well you know you saying you didn't intend on killing her is totally contradictory to every action you took 
after the fact, like after she told him she no longer wanted to be with him, it seemed like he wanted to kill her and planned on killing her for a very long, long, long time. So what do you actually mean? It's clear and obvious that Willie deserves every bit of jail that he is in right now. And hopefully he stays there for a long time. And that is a wrap on today's case. My question is, why violent offenders and sexual predators are always released from prison when statistically they always re-offend? Like the percentages ain't added up. Why are we letting these people out of jail? Why? What, what, what's the math on that? Don't forget to check out Toon Blast through the link in my description before you guys leave and I'll see you next time.